I can hear it already. It's barely dusk. Its screeches are penetrating my walls, calling for a reaction. I can't look, or it will know. Once it can't see me, I can't react, can't move. There's nothing that can be done. I just have to wait until morning. It all started when I was a kid, seven years old to be exact. I grew up right off of a small town. My dad was a farmer, so surprise, we lived on a farm. My family owned around 150 acres of land, most of which consisted of thick woods. I would often have friends come over, and my dad would light a campfire and tell horror stories to us all. I remember one time he even made my friend pee himself, so we had to go in for the night. However, my dad never told me this one. Maybe because it wasn't fake. Maybe he held on to this one because he was hoping I wouldn't have to live through it. I'm sorry, Dad. Your effort failed. One night, at the age of seven, I woke up in the middle of the night. At first, I didn't know exactly why, but around 30 seconds after I awoke, I found my reason. I can't forget the first time I heard it. I thought my ears would start bleeding. The yell was extremely high-pitched, and so loud. It sounded like what you might imagine a young woman would sound like if she were being brutally murdered. Except, it sounded like her mouth was right next to my ears. I couldn't hear myself think. It would screech for five seconds, then be quiet for thirty. I was petrified. I couldn't move. Remember when you were a kid, and you would hear something just out of your view? And even though you knew it was nothing, deep down, you were still scared and couldn't move? Well, it was kind of like that. Except I didn't know I was okay. I was scared, right down to my bones. After a couple minutes of screeching, I finally started to get up. I was too scared not to know, and it sounded like it was coming from the edge of the forest. I sat up in my bed and swung my legs over. I lived on the second story of my house, so in order to see the ground, I had to be closer to the window. I started walking towards the window. Another shriek caused me to wince and cower. Before I recovered, I was wrapped into a bear hold and a man's hand covered my mouth. I tried to fight back, tried to yell, but the hand prevented my noise from being too loud. My dad's voice calmed me down as his hand began to loosen from my mouth. It was too late though. It had heard me. I saw it then on the edge of the forest. It looked kind of like a person, but it was much taller at least 12 feet. Its arms and legs were the length of people. Its features were hidden by the darkness. Its silhouette standing eerily still in the moonlight. But its eyes. They were piercing bright, vibrant white dots in the distance. They were looking right at me. Then, it screeched again. I went to flinch, but my father held me tightly so I didn't move. We sat there for I don't know how long. All I know is that there were exactly 316 screeches. I counted every single one, its eyes watching me every second. The sky changed from a pitch black to a dark purple, the sun beginning to find its way back, and as it did, it disappeared. It was there one second, gone the next. And when I had noticed it was gone, my father released me. I remember being too scared to speak that morning. But later in the day, I asked him what that was. He never really told me. All he told me was, don't let it see you move. He never told me what it would do if it did. But I sure as hell listened to him. After that night, it happened every night for the next three years. The night of my 10th birthday, it made no noise. I still didn't sleep. 
Its silence had brought me more concern than its voice at that point. The next night, it started back up again. When I was 11, my dad sent me on a vacation to my uncle's house for a month during the summer. During that month, it didn't bother me once. I also named it The Shrieker. After that month, I went back home. The Shrieker didn't bother me then either. It was silent for nearly four years. A week after my 15th birthday, I had completely forgotten about the Shrieker. It hadn't forgotten about me. Its yell woke me up that night. The frightening noise sent chills down my spine for the first time in years. It was there again at the edge of the forest. I could tell from the sound. It yelled at me again and again, begging me to get up and greet it. I stayed in my bed. When it stopped, you could have convinced me it was standing under my window. It sounded like it was at least. It started shrieking every night again. At this point I had a cell phone, and my dad would text me every couple of nights to remind me to stay in my bed. He heard it too. Every night. I asked my mom what it was, and she looked at me confused, as if I was telling her about an imaginary friend that ate other people. The look that my dad gave me told me to never ask her again. Every night it would start at the tree line, but make its way closer to my house by the end of the night. It was doing something new now. It was moving. I never got out of my bed. I followed my dad's instructions and acted like I was asleep. According to him, it was trying to wake me up, and the game was to try and stay asleep. I knew it wasn't a game, but my dad always treated me like I was younger than I was. I appreciate he was trying not to frighten me, but it was too late for that. Three days before my 16th birthday, that night it started shrieking earlier than usual. I didn't even have time to get to sleep. Usually it would wake me up from my slumber around 4 or 5 in the morning. That night, it started at 1. I didn't get any sleep that night. It crept closer and closer to my house as time went on, until it was right outside my window. I was still living on the second story at the time, and even the 12-foot monstrosity couldn't quite peek into my window. However, the night wasn't over yet, and the shrieker wasn't done moving. Through the night, it started to get further away from me. Not towards the woods, though. It started moving along the house. I listened to it silently as, it the as its shrieks got further and further from my window. I watched the sky, praying that it would just change colors already. The shrieker got further and further. I was ready for it to be over. The sky finally adopted the purple shade of morning. I was relieved. That was until the last sound of the shrieker that night echoed through my halls. It wasn't a yell this time. It was a knock. I asked my parents if either of them knocked on my bedroom door that morning. Neither of them did. I'm an only child, and all of our animals live outside. So the thought of something knocking on my bedroom door terrified me. It was nothing compared to the next night, though. I woke up around 4 in the morning, maybe closer to 4.30. It was weird, though because the shrieker hadn't started yet. I just laid in my bed for about an hour. That was when the noise of the shrieker nearly gave me a heart attack. It was right outside my bedroom door. I jumped. I'm glad the door was closed, because it would have definitely seen my movement. After the shriek, it knocked on my door again. Then it waited. Then it shrieked again, followed by a knock. This repeated for about 10 minutes before it went silent for longer than usual. That was when I heard the sound of my doorknob turning. Peeing myself was the least of my worries, as my door began to creak open. It was there, in the hallway. I could see it better now. Its eyes were still glowing light, making it hard to see, but its features were noticeable now. It wasn't wearing any clothes, but also it didn't have anything, anywhere. Its entire body was smooth, other than its face. The eyes blinded me, but I saw its mouth. At first, its mouth was just a long black slit across its face, but as soon as I began to study it, it snapped open in less than a quarter of a second. 
and released that unholy sound before closing back up as quickly as it had opened. I was so scared that I couldn't move, even if I wanted to. It stood there, bent over awkwardly in my hallway, for what felt like hours. I heard my dad's bedroom door open, and it did too. It stopped shrieking, and its head snapped sideways to look at the door. It just glared for the longest time, as I heard footsteps enter the hallway. The footsteps were soft, padded. It was my mom. I was terrified, too scared to talk. As the sounds of my mom walking got closer to my door, the shrieker extended its legs awkwardly and bent over more as my mom walked by my bedroom door on her way to the bathroom. She walked right under it, as if it weren't there. It just stared at me once my mom walked past. It sat and watched as I heard my mom's midnight restroom break. The toilet flushed, the bathroom door opened. The soft footsteps started making their way back through the hallway. Its awkward position remained, as it seemed to contort to fit against the walls and ceiling of the hallway, allowing my mom enough room to walk through without touching it. Its eyes followed her until she was right outside of my bedroom door. That's when its head whipped 180 degrees to look at me, and it shrieked. I jumped. I couldn't help it. It saw me. Its black slit of a mouth curled into a smile as it stopped opening its mouth to make noises. It almost purred as it just stared at me. My mom heard my quiet spasm and stopped in the hallway, peeking into my room. Are you okay, honey? I heard her ask. The shrieker didn't react. It just watched me. I didn't respond, and she began to walk into my room to make sure I was okay. That's when my dad's bedroom door seemed to slam open and the loud aggressive footsteps came running down the hall. The shrieker's head snapped to look, and once it did, its lanky hand slithered away from the wall and grabbed my father by the neck, throwing him against my doorframe. The loud thud of my dad's head hitting the doorframe caused me to flinch. When I opened my eyes, the shrieker was gone. We took my dad to the hospital. My mom told them that he ran out of his room like he was sleepwalking and slipped, hitting his head against the doorframe as he fell. I don't think she saw the shrieker. I think it's me and my dad are the only ones that can. They said my dad would be okay, but he would have to stay in the hospital for the time being. My mom took me back home later that day. The next few nights were hell. It came to my room every night. With my dad not there, I knew it would be even worse if I moved then. I just kept my eyes closed and I didn't react to the shrieker. I made it through the nights. When my dad was able to come back home, I told him that it was coming to my room every night, and he said, I know. After that, he never left his room to attack it again. I also never moved to provoke it. When I was 18, I moved out of the house to go to college. I moved into the dorms of my college once classes started, and the shrieker stopped bothering me. Every once in a while, I woke up in the middle of the night, thinking I heard its cries but never heard it after waking up. After college, I moved in with my girlfriend. She lived in the middle of a small city. The shrieker was still absent from my life at that point, over four years after I moved out of my parents' home. I stayed like that for another three years, before my mom called asking if I could stay at their house and watch the animals while her and my dad went on a vacation for two weeks. Reluctantly, I agreed. That was three days ago. I got all of my stuff moved in over the day, and I'm sitting in the living room watching TV. I don't know when it got there, but out of the massive picture window, I can see its silhouette. It's shrieking again. It's welcoming. Me home. <laughs>